guys, Will here with Into Mobile. We just took a little hardware tour of the Samsung Focus, which is the late one of the snazziest Windows Phone 7 devices that are about to hit market next month. This guy is the only, like I mentioned uh, previously, this guy is one of the only Windows Phone 7 devices with a micro SD card slot that actually doesn't act as external storage, but it does boost your internal storage, um, and it's not swappable. But So, hardware tour on the last round. This round, we're doing a software walkthrough. Real quick, I want to show you, um, we won't concentrate too much on Windows Phone 7, because we've seen that, right? We've seen the tiles on the start screen that you can actually, you know, hold down and move around, and you'll see there's a little pin icon right there to unpin it from the start screen. That's the new, that's the new uh, touch uh, metaphor that they're using, and if I want to pin new stuff to the start screen, I'll just, you know, Hold that down. No, maybe not that. Let's do something else. Let's put Hotmail up there. I'm going to hold that down. You'll get that. It says pin to start, right? Pin that to start. And it goes right there. Hold that down. And I'm going to move that right there. Tap the screen to lock it. And there we go. So that's the start screen. This is your apps list. This is where everything goes. You move every, anything from here to the pin to, this, to the start screen. And you can pin anything to the start screen, really. Songs, radio stations, web pages, um, you name it. But this is the Samsung Focus, so what does that mean? It means it comes with all the different kinds of AT&T software, the orange stuff you see right here, Family Map, My Wireless, Navigator, Radio, UVerse Mobile, as well as a couple Samsung-specific apps like Daily Briefing. And Daily Briefing was made popular as an app and a widget in, in uh, Android, right? So we are glad to see that it's back and actually works well in Windows Phone. Windows Phone set hard to type while filming here. We're going to set that up. Good. Hit the back button. We're going to look for news. That's updating itself. Refresh. Coming from Reuters. We've got stocks. Let's refresh that real quick. We've got all that good stuff. Hitting a, let's see, let's check out the NASDAQ. And that's what you get for NASDAQ. You got five day three month, six month, one year views on the stock. It doesn't rotate like the iPhone, but still, it's a good, it's pretty cool. It's a good app. Um, side swiping all over the place, and you'll notice that it's all about side swiping through these hubs, and this is a hub because it's panoramic, you know, the entire uh, UI extends beyond the screen, right? Um, going back to weather, checking out, let's see what the weather looks like, tap on that. And we get current, we get six-day forecast, we can toggle between the two. Okay, so that is Daily Briefing, which is a Samsung-specific app. We also have AT&T Navigator, which makes sense, and AT&T Radio, actually. I kind of want to show you guys that. Um, in order to do that, what's weird is I actually have to turn off Wi-Fi. and We're connected to Wi-Fi right now, but I have to turn that off because... For some reason, AT&T Radio just won't work if you're even if you're connected to AT&T's network. If you're on Wi-Fi, I guess it prioritizes data onto the Wi-Fi network, but it needs data over the AT&T network to work. So, it'll, we'll uh, we'll live with it for now. So everything is arranged in genres, right? You get these different. You get they're basically radio stations. So if I go to the urban genre, I can get all the radio stations that I can listen to you know, internet radio stations that I can listen to for, say, urban hits. Oh, my trial period has expired. That's a shame. Well, uh, wanted to give you guys a look at that, but uh, it works well. You'll have to take my word for it. And if you plug in headphones, you can actually use the radio that's built into this guy, which is right there in the music and videos. K Fox, that's a good one. That's the speaker right there. You can hear it coming through. So pretty cool. What uh, what else is cool actually is that you can star this. Or I'll add that star. I'll add the star. And when I go back. It shows my the radio station that I discovered in the history, and it's paused right there from the screen. You can actually see that. I wonder if it'll do anything if I hold that down. Nope, no tap and hold functionality there. But still, 
Very cool. You can look through it in your history to go through. Um, people. Okay, so people is where you aggregate all your contacts from Facebook, from Windows Live. All your contacts come, are, are aggregated here. Shows you your own status update. What's new shows you everybody's status update in your network. And swiping again to the right, you'll see recent photo activity from all your friends in your, in your network. If you want to mess with your own status update, you hit me. And you have your own status network, uh, status updates there, and your own uh, photo activity and your own timeline activity right there, all easily viewable. And that's all integrated into Windows Phone 7. Unfortunately, there is no Twitter uh, integration just yet. That's coming. And Xbox Live. So Xbox Live is going to be a a really central part of the central component to the Windows Phone 7 experience. You can get games and all your games that you install from Marketplace are aggregated right here and the games portion of um, Xbox Live will spotlight or highlight some games for you to you know download, trial, buy, whatever. You can also mess with your Xbox Live avatar so you sign in with your with the Windows Live ID that's uh, tied to your Xbox Live avatar and Xbox Live on Windows Phone 7 will automatically pull down your avatar information, your character right here, let you mess with your character, customize your character, and even eventually in the future you can actually play mini games to uh, get uh, experience points on this guy. And you get game requests from your friends if you're playing games, turn by turn based games with your friends. So that's a look at that. Now, one la well, a couple other things I want to show you. We went to the cam. Uh, here's the camera. So here's the dedicated camera shutter button. If I hold that down, It'll fire up the camera, and what you do is there's a half press. Flash is coming in, half press to focus, full press to take the picture, and it goes to the left. If I want to preview that picture that I just took, I just slide to the left, like so, then I go back and take my picture. Now, um, zoom is right here. You can't, you, can, you can't use the volume control rocker to zoom, or at least... Yeah, no volume control rocker to zoom. Oh, notice right there. Notice that the uh, radio is actually... The radio is actually up there in the notification bar. That's actually kind of cool. If I hold down the, the volume button, I can access that. So that's cool. And there's the zoom. I want to show you guys. So this is the little video camera toggle switch right there. And I want to show you guys the settings. There's autofocus mode, white balance, image effect, contrast, saturation, sharpness, e, uh, you know, uh, light exposure, sensitivity, ISO, um, metering, photo quality, wide dynamic range, photo resolution, and anti-shaking. Now, this wide dynamic range is pretty cool. This is like the HDR feature on the iPhone. It basically allows you to take really good um, high high contrast shots. So if you have something that's uh, an object like this that's half hidden in a shadow and half in sunlight, the wide dynamic range will let you take a good picture of that. Um, whereas if you don't use wide dynamic range, the part of the picture that's in the that's in the shadow will be will be completely dark, while the part that's in the light will obviously be overexposed. And I uh, just want to show you, we're going to get rid of the radio right there. We're going to stop playing it, and that's how you do it. Um, also, you can actually toggle between ring and vibrate modes just by hitting that, you know. Just hold down the volume button, just hit the volume button, and it'll bring down this console right here, and you just switch between the two like so. If I unplug the headphones, notice I can't play. I can't play any radio because there's no antenna. The headphones act as a radio. So that's a quick little look. I also want to show you guys what email looks like. Check that out. Um, I get emails for Equinox. Everything is all side swipey. Notice how the text comes in. It's all delayed and smooth and cool. But one cool thing is, if I were to reply to this guy, the keyboard includes an emoticon. Other fields, the keyboard will include an emoticon button. Other keyboards uh, in different fields will include a dedicated .com or at button. This one includes, since this is messaging based, it includes an emoticon button. And that's cool, and you get all these different features, like you can, you know, mass delete or move them to different folders, stuff like that. Mark as red, I can do that. I can refresh, I can go to different folders, I can do all kinds of stuff. And a quick little look at the calendar here. You get your day agenda. Notice that day up here is moving as I keep scrolling, right? 
and I can go to month view and the month keeps moving as I scroll. So cool on that and I want to show you guys Marketplace. So the Marketplace is fully functional right now. We have the Samsung Zone with Samsung apps in it. Cool stuff there. Give it a second to load, right? All these Because this is a Samsung phone. Or we can go into the Apps Marketplace and check out what is there, like Open Table, uh, the Top Frogger, Star Wars, Bejeweled, New Stuff, Featured Stuff, all the good stuff. So there you have it. That's a quick little look at Windows Phone 7, the software uh, walkthrough on the Samsung Focus.